Hi, it's Sam from Intrinsic Dev. In this video, I'm going to take you through how to set up our Tesla driver for Control 4. Once you've downloaded the driver from the website, uh, head, head over into Composer, uh, go to the Driver tab, uh, go to Add or Update Driver. When the window appears, uh, navigate to wherever you downloaded the Tesla.c4z file, um, select it, hit Open. Once you've added the driver to Composer, um, make sure you're in System Design and head over to the Search tab at the top right. Uh, and there we're going to search for Tesla. Uh, we get one result, Tesla Intrinsic Dev, that's the driver we're looking for. If I double click that, it'll add it to my current room. So there we go, very quick. Uh, we see here we've got room, uh, we've got the Tesla driver at the bottom. Um, the driver is Cloud licensed, so we can see at the top it has already licensed itself. It gives us the MAC address of the controller, the current driver version, and the driver's reporting that it's okay. Now, to set the driver up, what we need to do is we need to enter the username and password for the client's Tesla account. So, the same username and password they would use to log in with their Tesla app. Um, now, for the purpose of the demo um, or this demonstration video, we're able to use a demo set of credentials. Now these credentials can be used by you if you don't own a Tesla and still want to show this driver off in your showroom system. So we're simply entering demo and demo as both the username and password. And we'll put the driver into this mode. So we'll enter those. We'll give the driver a few seconds to check the details. We can see that they've both now changed to set and we've got a key which represents the login details that we need. Once we've done that, uh, we need to go to the Actions tab. We're going to click Get Vehicles. Um, you only need to do this when you install the driver uh, or if the client changes vehicle or adds vehicles to the accounts and you want to change over the vehicle that the driver is showing. Um, but this is really a one-off sort of step. Once we've done that, we go back to Properties and we'll see here that the demo account has three um, virtual vehicles installed. Um, vehicle 1, Vehicle 2, Vehicle 3 and Vehicle ID. This would um, show you the friendly name that the customer has assigned the vehicle uh, along with the Tesla ID for the vehicle. Um, we use the vehicle drop down menu to pick which one of the five possible vehicles in the driver that we want the driver to display. So we'll go with number 2 for the sake of this example. Uh, to be clear the driver is only capable of showing the details of one Tesla vehicle at a time. That's not to say you couldn't install multiple drivers in the system, each one representing a different vehicle, but one instance of the driver is for one vehicle. So this is the driver now set up ready to go. Uh, all that remains to be done is to refresh navigators, um, just to make sure that all the screens in the system are updated and they will now show the driver. Um, if that's all you need the driver to do, you want the driver to uh, show the status and give some basic level of control, like you know, honk the horn, stuff like that, um, that can be done um, from the UI panel or any of the touchscreens in the system. Um, there is a wee bit more to the driver if you want to get a bit more involved. Um, we can go to the programming section of Composer. And if we go to the actions, we'll see that the driver has also exposed programmable actions. So if we click Tesla over here and go to device specific commands, um, you can actually use any of the C4 programming to drive um, setting the charge ranges, turning charge on and off, flashlights, honk horn, uh, turn on the uh, HVAC, turn it off, lock the car and wake the car from a sleep state. So they can all be driven by macro programming through the programming section of Control 4. That's it. That's uh, installing the Tesla driver in Control 4.